Welcome everyone to another Tracks on Sundays. I'm Trax the Max, and this is another Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, thank you for joining us again on this Only Voids account. I would also like to thank Jay Giggs for recently reaching out to me and giving me some pointers and some direction on where to go with the whole series here and with my channel in general. It's been really helpful, so cheers, my dude. I, uh, I don't have a Jay Giggs mug yet so i'm not in the mug club or anything but i have a bob ross one my sister gave me for my birthday and i was like eh, that's close enough so um cheers to you my friend this is actually empty so i'm gonna fill this thing up and you can actually see what this cool thing can do be right back so i got my hot beverage here and as you can see Bob likes to paint and he starts painting once you put in some hot beverage so cheers Jay Giggs thanks for all the tips my man and uh, you know if there's anything I can do for you let me know right hmm hot cocoa good beverage for a 13 year old trapped in a middle-aged man's body now um, we are on day 15 as you can see, so we're going to get ourselves an amulet here. That's pretty nice. Yes. Oh, it's only three star. Really? Well, I guess we just get some silver then. Go to shop. Goodie bag. Three days left for this. As you can see, we've made it to level 42. So we did make quite some progress. I did push a little bit with some gems to reach the level 40 that was for the forge pass that's going on right here so that we could actually participate in this because that starts at level 40. I also thought maybe we can start pushing Doom Tower a little bit but that was that's still kind of out of reach I'd say. As you can see, we've moved up a couple of stages here, but I, I was hard stuck right here. And these ways are really hard, man. I really thought School Crown would just plow through these ways, but yeah, she she needs better gear for that. That's for sure. And maybe some support to, you know, get her to, to the last wave because there's a lot of crowd control in these rooms, man. I didn't realize that it's been so long, it seems like, so... Uh, yeah, we're going to have to find a way to, to push through here. But I would really like to get here into Griffin. Even four-star Guardian gear could be really handy for something like Clam Boss. But I'll talk about that later. So, what have we been up to? We have mostly been farming Campaign. Since Campaign is our biggest strength with a Skull Crown, right? Um, it's also the easiest way to get some power onto the account because while well, there's not really RNG involved it's just you farm chickens and you make five stars and six stars right so you know what you're doing with your energy it's all going to a good cause whereas if you farm dungeons you're gonna get some good gear perhaps maybe who knows so I've opted to just push as much campaign as possible we're also running on this Two week XP boosts, you know, so I just figured, you know, just I'll try to push as much as I can in the campaign, get as many food farmed as possible. There also have been some training events going on and stuff, so might as well just push there, you know. We did open these right here. I didn't open these ones yet. Um, I think I opened this because there was an ancient shard here, but we're really low on gems and we do still have some things to work on. So we have this challenge here in the dungeon, and I believe after this dungeon challenge, there's a void shard here. I'm not completely sure about that one, but I think there's a void after this one. But we need to place a block debuffs buff on a champion or use a skill that removes debuffs while beating stage 7 of the void keep. Void keep's open right now, but we do not have a block debuff champion, so we are kind of in a position where we need to farm endure him forest and get ourselves a spirit host so we can put up the stupid buff and then you know forget about all this <laughs> i have not 
found any spirit host yet or any champion whatsoever that has a block debuffs buff and that's pretty aggravating i'm not gonna lie it's it's kind of annoying because they're just sitting there I, I think i've been sitting on this for over a week now and you don't I haven't really been farming Durham Forest, but I have been pulling a lot of mystery shards because I also... I also got a little too ambitious here with the clan quests and I thought, hey, maybe I can do this quest right here, summon 20 rare champions from mystery shards, but... Man, that's a lot of mystery shards. Like, I think I've pulled roughly... somewhere between 800 and 1000 now. And we're at like 9 out of 20, so... And, you know, the gems are low here, and as you can see here, my mystery shards are all depleted, basically. So yeah, we're lost here in the forest looking for this spirit host, really. It's gonna be fantastic when she drops, and then we can do our missions. Well, not the mission ch challenge, right? For the Void Keep. That's where my energy is gonna go today, and I'm gonna use all my gems to find that spirit host. And hopefully we're gonna find her. But we've also been doing some other stuff like farming a little bit of masteries here and there. And we also pushed up in spider like I said I was gonna try and do. Oh, they're gonna show me about iron twins. That's sweet, but I don't really want to do that right now. Okay, so spider here. As you can see, this is full auto. We also got our Oboros three star to push this aura, right? Uh, increase attack by 33%. That's a nice little boost there that we can really use on our champions. As you can see here, the squad has also been moved up a little bit. So we got these two to five star, we got her to six star. Uh, she's been left behind for now, but um, she will follow. I'm, I'm uh, on my way making some four stars for her. I believe I actually have a couple yeah, maybe I only need one left actually. Let, let me let me check real quick. So I got one chicken here and I got two here. Yeah, so we're really close actually. If you know what? Do we have any brews? No, we don't really. We're we're depleted of brews. I've been training hard, man. I've been just trying to get everyone up, get their stats up, you know. So But it's okay, it's fine. We got some time for all that. But we got our spider to run now, right? So I'll throw them in here real quick so you can see. It's not fast or anything. It's almost like three minutes or around three minutes, but it doesn't really fail unless something really bad happens and Skull Crown just takes so many poisons that she can't handle it and then the run is basically over. But I'd say 95% win rate or something. Most of the battles are just a win, so. And it's getting better because obviously these three champions are getting stronger along the way, right? They're getting some XP. So I've been doing this a little bit because I still don't really have any accessories for my Skull Crown, which would make all this stuff a lot easier as well. So, and alongside this, the other dungeon I focused on a little bit was Minotaur. And all the rest, I pretty much stayed out of. Only for the missions, I did do some of the potion keeps. So like I needed to get five greater magic potions. I needed to get five greater spirit potions, force potions, right? Um, I did that when I had to, which also took a lot of energy, by the way. Um, I'd say roughly... Probably around 2,000 energy in total to, to do those three missions. Now we just have to do the Void one. But the Void one obviously is good for us because we need a lot of Void potions still. They're all hungry for potions. So that'll be a nice bump in our power as well once we can ascend some more of these champions. Because I might actually have some accessories for some of these, but just not have them ascended to the point that they can actually wear them yet. So once that happens, that's going to be a nice, nice bump, right? I have messed around a little bit with the gear, but nothing crazy. Uh, like I, I bought 
I actually bought a piece. Do we have a banner lord? We don't, but this is kind of okay if we do find one. So maybe I'll just hang on to it for now. So this piece right here I bought, it's nothing amazing, but it's also really not that bad. The only real issue is there's no crit rate or speed on it, but these three stats are decent enough that I thought, you know, 500,000 silver is quite a chunk, but this is a pretty powerful piece for our account right now. And it's probably going to take a while before I can actually farm these on a regular basis so I just decided to buy this one and it rolled pretty nicely for now and other than that we haven't really changed that much I don't think I changed her build up to defeat the boss in faction wars so I gave her more resistance and we wiggled through that at level 50 so that was pretty pretty awesome but a lot of this stuff we have to manual so it it all takes a lot a lot of time really and uh, i'm hoping to get more stuff automated in in the near future because it's yeah it's a lot more work than i anticipated originally so uh so we also we have been here in gold one but it's pretty hard to stay there I must say you know this is a, another one of those teams that yeah if he's faster we might be in trouble so it looks like ah we might get there still oh no we're fine okay level 50 this should be okay but sometimes these guys are built really good and uh, yeah, they just smack you, man. <laughs> now, this one didn't even have life steal, it looked like. But yeah, we try to pick off some of these teams and push when we can because it's quite a long way. Oh no. She was going to counter attack there. If she was able to do that. Darn. Could probably actually beat this one too, no? Let's try. Uh oh. Yeah, this should be in the bag, okay. Oh, we've actually been bumped back pretty hard here, huh? Yeah, people have been farming us. But, yeah, like I said, we did make it into gold, and we did get some gold medals. Not a lot. Only a couple of wins, I guess. But this one right here, we still have a long way for this one. And that's only level four, man. So, so if you want to get these up, we're going to have to do a lot of arena still and really try and get a team going that we can at least farm gold medals because doing this with silver medals is, I don't know, it's, it's, it's almost a waste of time really. Maybe I should talk about this right here. I've actually decided that I'm not going to go for accuracy first, but I'm going to go for crit damage first. Now that might seem weird to some people, but the fact is it's actually harder to get crit rate and crit damage than it is to get accuracy so i figured you know what let's just try something different i've actually never went gone this route before but since we have a skull crown and the whole idea about skull crown is that she just blows everything up right i figured my accuracy is probably not as important as my crit damage we also don't have that many debuffers to begin with like Sure, these have some debuffs, but we don't need like 300 accuracy or anything like that. And as you can see, we don't even have like banners on or stuff or even really good gear. And we're able to get some okay-ish accuracy for what we're doing at the moment. And I think by the time that we actually need like 200 or 200 plus accuracy, we'll have perception gear normally and we'll be able to 
wiggle some of that stuff on the ones who need it and hopefully we'll just also have some better gear in general and not really need the accuracy as much as the crit damage it it's possibly the wrong call to do it that way but i figured you know it's a lot easier to get the crit rate on your gauntlets than it is to get crit damage on your gauntlets with the right amount of crit rate on the rest of your gear like that's way more gear intensive than just finding perception and, and finding accuracy in your build in my opinion so yeah i don't know you can call me out in the comments if you think that's a good idea or a bad idea but i feel like it's actually a good idea to to go this route for once now we do have a void shard that i would love to pull especially because there's this guy in here and i think for a new account Krisk is just ridiculously good um not that he's bad here but i think he's just overall better on a new account um uh, out of these two guys i don't even know what this one does is that an aoe burn it's not aoe burn it's kind of aoe burn But he needs less, or she, he or she needs less books than the other one, right? 30% dungeon hour, doom tower. Okay, so I'm leaning towards this one. Even though this is really good. The problem with this champion is that he needs so many books dude so many like even like you can not ascend him and then then he still needs like what is that seven 14 15 books 15 books and then you can ascend him again and then you need another five so 20 books in total hmm. that's a that's a lot of books but I mean, I wouldn't mind pulling this guy, but I think, I just think a, an HP burn is probably more useful, and this also has a provoke, so. Yeah, let's put that one in there. Confirm. So, yeah, we're gonna pull this later and uh, see what we get, but I'll, I'll go over the account first, and then we can do all the fun stuff after that. So, back to Arena. It's, yeah, like I said, it's been kind of hard trying to stay here in. In gold so we're constantly moving between gold and I caramba no yeah see it's always it's always a, a gamble at the sea if you're faster or not and my champions aren't really that fast yet so we're usually getting our butts kicked Let's see here so Tag Team Arena, I've also tried, been trying to keep up and get ourselves these fragments, as you can see. I think I have six of him and five of her, or four of her maybe now. Let's check that out real quick. So, okay, 60, 40. So basically on those fragments, we're halfway, right? So normally next week, we should have those two both finished, which is awesome. And then we can start working our way up for this guy. I also went ahead and got myself these guys ready, as you can see. So we can fuse another one of her, which is also awesome. Then we have that one ready. Uh, these I still have to prepare. I haven't done those yet, but it's not that much work to, to get those up. And as you can see, I also collected a, quite a few extras. And I am planning on making more than one copy of this guy because this guy is really and a lot of the, the dungeon and stuff is really one of the reasons why we're actually able to push through. This right here is really, really good. As you can see, I booked him up already. He has a 75% chance on the A1 to provoke someone. And it's only one turn, but uh, in, in places like the Doom Tower, where you really don't want a specific champion to get a turn or do their nasty thing, like a man-eater put up their unkillable or something like that. He helps a ton there to 
make sure that doesn't happen, right? So. Now, in the back of this mug, there's a quote out of Bob Ross's series, if you ever watched that. If you have never watched that, please do. And it says, we don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. And my goodness, did we have some happy accidents this week. First off, we got into the clan shop this week with quite some clan gold, yeah? I had enough or almost enough to buy a Void Shard if a Void Shard would have popped up. However, a Void Shard did not pop up. Instead, we got a bunch of overpriced chickens. We get some accessories, which that's debatable. I would say that's a high risk, high reward item to buy right now. Um, on a normal account, this is way better to buy than on this account. Why is that? Well, because we don't have every faction to our disposal, right? We only have a couple of factions. So if you look at it that way, you only have a one out of three shot that you actually get an accessory that's from a faction that you have. And then, you know, the item has to be good too. Like right now, any of these items are probably good. Now not going to discuss about that. So I've opted not to do this quite yet. Maybe later if we have a champion in each faction, then I think the gamble is more worth it. But right now, I figured our resources are better elsewhere. Now, we also have this open right here. And that's for Killstroke. And it's five or six star artifacts, right? Contains a random killstroke artifact. Killstroke artifacts increase crit damage by 20% and speed by 5%. And I was like, and this is a two piece set, by the way, which is also really important. And that makes the RNG a little more feasible. So I thought, you know what? This is it. I'm going to go and buy these, and this is going to spike the account this week. And man, I don't know about that happy accident, Bob Ross, but it felt like a disaster to me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, I bought two pieces thinking maybe one of this is one of these two is going to be half decent uh both of them were trash i bought another one kind of rage bought another one was also trash and then i rage bought another one and that one was like maybe not trash but basically yeah trash as well like not really good so I more or less wasted 600 clan gold on four of these and none of these items were good. That was one of the happy accidents of this week. The other accident was then that I started to push to level 40 uh, so I could get into Doom Tower earlier, right? And then they dropped an event here. It's gone already, but there was an event here where you could earn yourself a Void Shard doing training and of course I had just pushed and pushed and pushed right before that event dropped so I was more or less out of resources and I couldn't get the void shard there anymore I was however able to pick up two books from that event so I was able to get her fully booked basically and I dodged this passive which is awesome because we don't care about this passive whatsoever so she's she's optimal right now in terms of books which is a, a huge relief now we can start working on a boro or any or maybe broad mob if we get them next week or something i might actually do that save up for broad mod and start getting books in him pretty unfortunate we could have had one void shard more than we have right now but you know it is what it is um we have to do it with this right now so lamb boss uh, we are two keying nightmare or nightmare. Yeah, we're two keying nightmare easy. Two keying normal, um, and we're getting really close to one keying normal at the po at this point. I've also tried hard, but that's like 1.7 million that I'm doing, and at that at this point right now, that could only get us this chest, which that's not really enough yet. You really want the guardian chest before you start doing hard, I think. So, actually, let's put this one in here real quick. 
so that I still get a key before reset. So yeah, I also pushed level 40 with the idea that maybe I can start pushing Doom Tower, you know, because that starts at 42, and if we would be able to get into Griffin and get gear there, that would also be really awesome, but... Unfortunately, I'm not there yet. It's it's a little too hard right now still. So I'm yeah, just leveling everyone up really and hopefully maybe next week or so we can start taking down those those floors a little easier. Now, one of the ideas I have for the account is the guy who just died here, Falhound. He has an interesting ability to me. He has an ability where he puts up a block damage on one of your one of your units, right? And it's normally it's the unit that is in your starting position. So that would be her right here. Um, I don't know if he prioritizes someone else if they're lower HP or something. But I was thinking that there's a there's a cool thing we might be able to do if if we put him into Guardian, for instance, and we speed tune it, we could possibly make it so that on the second AOE, he will put up his block damage before the AOE, and if we put him into a Guardian set, he'll actually help absorb some of that damage, right? So, he'll act like an ally protector, even though we don't have an ally protector right now. I think this should work because, well, think of it this way. So you have an AOE, you have another AOE, and then you have the stun hit, right? So, first AOE will just do as normal, and Everyone will take damage. Falhound would take more damage because Falhound would have the Guardian set on. So he would also be taking some damage of the others, right? Then the second wave, it's his turn again, but he heals up a little bit from his Guardian set. And he then puts a block damage on, right? So that turn... Fellhound would not get any damage. The rest would take damage, but again, less damage because Fellhound is taking the damage. He's not really, though, because he has block damage on, but he is absorbing some of the damage of the other dudes. And the third hit, so the stun target hit, if we can make sure that Fellhound never becomes a stun target, he'll just heal up there again as well. So... What this would create is basically Falhound would only take damage one time. It would be a chunk because that's, you know, that's the un unprotected uh, turn, I guess you could call it, right? Where he doesn't have block damage or anything to protect himself. But the other two turns, he wouldn't take any damage at all. So he would be healing three times while only taking damage once. Um, I don't know if that's far-fetched, if there's something there or not. I know I've tried this kind of thing in the past with a account that was only login champions, and uh, I used the Templar in the same manner, who also puts up a block damage, right? Every three turns, that is. And uh, that worked pretty well, pretty well, too, I must say. The only issue that Templar had was... You know, if there was affinity or anything, and it was magic affinity, he would be the target anyway. And that kind of fell apart that way. But I'm thinking that might be a, a nice way to support the team. Uh, the downside of that is I'm not sure if that's auto-friendly, because I don't know what Falhound does with the A3, if he places it on someone who has less HP than he does, or... Or if he always puts it onto the aura or the, the lead position, right? Because, well, if he puts it onto the lead position, obviously we'll have to put Falhound there. Which also is a con because, well, he doesn't... None of them have an aura yet, but if we would pull one with an aura, we would, you know, we'd like to have that instead. But 
I think that could be a powerful effect. That's that's all I'm saying. And you know, he also has the A2, obviously, which is a two-turn cooldown. I think that means that every six turns you'd be able to put up two or three heals for the team. Uh, and then yeah, like I said, every second AoE make sure that he puts up his block damage so he doesn't take any damage but still protects the others a little bit and yeah who knows maybe that's the way for us to bump a little higher here obviously Oboro also just needs her mastery still all of these still need our masteries but she's six star so she's really important to get that war master once we get that going uh, I think we ha we can probably one key normal maybe we'll have to manual it because like you see here auto is not always optimal but uh yeah we didn't need that many points anyway so it's an easy two key that we're doing right now but yeah so the the goals of this week are we're gonna try and push for just the cr uh where is he this guy right here that way in the missions we can get past all this stuff and I believe after this a whole bunch of gems are available so that's gonna be really nice but to do so we need to get our champions ranked up to five star and win five greater void potions from stage seven or higher so today's a very busy day I'm gonna blow through all my gems and energy and try and get all of this done and once we can do that we can definitely push on through actually this one right here i don't even see that one so that's pretty nice that i see it right now because i can do that there you go upgraded that one okay so just the cr is one of the things we're going to be doing uh get everything ready for broad mod summon which is also going to be a huge that's that's going to change the account a lot i think hopefully allow us to push further in dungeons maybe like get to dragon 13 or something would be really really nice find some accessories for skull crown if we still have energy for all that kind of stuff and maybe push in doom tower a little bit so that we can perhaps get that guardian gear that we that i want really badly for uh this guy right here but there's a couple of things that I do want to do today still, and I promised I'd do that. And one of them is, we have this Void Shard, ladies and gentlemen, and I think it's time to pull that. And we also have some Soul Stones going for us, which can also make quite a difference if we pull a like a two or three star, because a two star epic, for instance, I mean that's a long shot, right? But if we if we pull that off, that's a a huge bump in attack and, and in damage of our champion. So um, yeah, let's 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 get in here right now. I'm pretty excited about this. This could be like a Ripper Fist, which would be exactly that. Would be a huge rip. But this could be. A really good champion as well um, I can also wait for a 2x I know some of the guys in the clan are doing that but I'm just gonna pull man what's this gonna be it's a rare ooh a drowned bloat raid I've never been this excited for a drowned bloat raid as right now um, so why am I excited about this dude uh, first off, he's a rare, so he's a little easier to book. That is not unimportant, okay? That's pretty important right now, even. Um, but the main thing he does is this right here. So, fully booked, three-turn cooldown, attacks all enemies, has a 100% chance of placing a 30% decreased defense, the small version, for two turns. Also has a 25% chance, goes up to 50% chance of placing a fear debuff for one turn on enemies under decreased defense. So, he has a little bit of crowd control built into him, 
but also decreased defense is so huge right now even if it's just a small version i am so grateful for this right now this is so so good um his a1 is a stun i believe but i thought it didn't have a really high chance 15 percent chance of stun but it increases by 5% for each debuff. Mm, well, I guess, you know, that's 20% if he lands his own his own debuff here, right? Maybe together with the uh, Rock Beast, you can pump that up to 25%. So, eh, it's, it's something. It probably helps in Doom Tower. It'll at least allow us to try and RNG wiggle ourselves through, right? So. And then his passive, Death Feast. Heals this champion by 15% of their max HP every time this champion or an ally kills an enemy. I don't know how I want to use this guy yet, but this is huge, for sure. I'm really, really happy with this. Um, I think this is going to help us a lot in the dungeons and everywhere to just have even the small version of a decreased defense. Really good. And I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I'm also kind of relieved that it, it's not like this super OP over the top Chris guy or something because imagine pulling Chris at this point. It, it's basically over, right? Like, you don't really need to do anything anymore. Chris will just... I think Chris can probably almost like so for sure solo Dragon 20 even, so it's like, what's the use of the account? Please give me some rares, I need 11 rares. Oh. Alright, so now we have some soul stones we can pull. Do I want these or do I want the, the new guy? Hmm. I'm thinking I want the new guy over her, actually. Might be wrong. Like, she's better in clown boss, but he's going to be overall more useful in the dungeons. And right now, I think dungeons are more important for the slim chance that this actually works. Epic? No. Nope. Good thing here is also we can sell most of our souls, right? Ooh, six star slayer. We can't do anything with that, but three star vanguard. We'll probably have to hold on to that one. If we ever pull that guy. Epic. We can sell all our non-voids easily. Don't need them. We can't use them. I thought for a second... I don't know why, but I thought it was Bellower for a second. And... Really? Are you going to troll me like that? I need a spirit host, not a spirit host. Spirit. Damn it. Or a soul. All right, so what do we get here? 55 of these, 106 of those, wow. That's this one, I think, right? All right, Mystic Market. We could get 11 of this already. We have 20 still. So we're gonna keep our eye out here if we find a Skull Crown or... No, oh, probably just... Probably just Skull Crown, really. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily pick any of the others up. Maybe. We'll see, though. So, that netted us a little bit of points here. Let's see, we're at 228. Hopefully, I can push a little further and get this last soul stone as well. That will probably be the, the end of our summoning run here, I would assume. I could potentially pull the sacreds we got from campaign but eh, 
I think that's not really worth it. I'm not really interested in these lunar points too much. I know there's a a void shard sitting here somewhere. Where is it? It's like yeah, 840 points. I mean, honestly, I'll be happy if I actually even get this 300. I'm not too worried about all this stuff, really. Um, I'm just trying to work on the champions that I have, and we'll we'll go from there, right? So, yeah, that's basically the update this week. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys are pulling or, or if you're also going for this whole event, good luck to you guys. There are a couple of people in our clan already who are participating in the voids thing here. Like you can see, this guy's participating. This guy right here, voids five ever. And there's a couple of AFKers, I think, too. But um, we have about five people. Uh, participating in this void only thing but if you want to participate in it too uh just hit me up here in the comments or on discord and i'll make some room for you don't worry and you can participate you can join our clan or you can participate in your own clan whatever you you like um if there's anything that you saw on my account that you're like tracks why you're doing this you could possibly do this better uh you should push for that or do that or whatever Please help me out in the comments. Uh, I don't know everything, you know, so uh, this is something new and yeah. One of the guys said that they've done this before and they used multiple rock beasts. So that's one of the tips that I've gotten. That was one of my own assumptions too, that this was going to be a huge player on this type of account. Because you can make multiple copies of them, right? So you could actually, you know, you can make a fast one, you can make one in a provoke set, you can make one in a stun set, you can make one in a toxic set even if you want to. Uh, there's all kinds of options to, to do with this guy and that's pretty neat. But, hey Trax, you forgot something here. I did, I did all the small ones, I didn't do the big one. Well, we're, we're pulling the big one too. This, I really hope this is going to hit one of our champions. That would be wicked. That would really give a huge spike in our damage. But, uh, it's an epic. Nope, <laughs> it's an anchorite. Alright. Cool thing here is we're probably never going to have to upgrade this, right? Because I don't see ourselves ever having more than 50 souls. But, yeah. Again, guys, thank you so much for joining this week. And, uh, yeah. Hope you guys have a nice week, and I'll catch you guys next week. Peace.